Hello, Namaste, Sasrikal. Good evening. Welcome to the SS Central Talk Show. I am super delighted that we have come up with the season three of the SS Central Talk Show. And today we are having very eminent guest from Pan India. Without wasting any time, I will introduce you to them. First, we have Amrita Berman, ma'am. She is a deputy director of Sunbeam Group of Schools Education Institutions. Welcome, ma'am. A passionate educator who believes that it is only through education that India's destiny can change. Ma'am has been associated with Sunbeam for over 27 years now. That's a long time. She did her MA and MBA from Kolkata. She has done her certificate course in advanced education, leadership and developing strategies of online teaching and learning from our graduate school of education. She, along with her team, have reached and worked on the Sunbeam precept which guides the academic and co-curricular transactions of Sunbeam. She closely monitors the unpacking of the precept across 25 Sunbeam schools. She has traveled widely both in India and abroad and is complete recognized with the happenings in the field of education all around. She's also the head of Round Square of Sunbeam Schools. She was part of the FICCI RISE delegation, which visited London in February 2019 to attend, learn it, and also attended the Microsoft World Educators Conference E2 in Paris, beside being present as panelist and expert in a host of national and international conferences. She has authored books for schools in English. She is also one of the prominent author educator whose thoughts featured on a special completion on joy and power of reading brought out by a scholastic called Why I Love to Read, which features many prominent writers. And at the very same time, ma'am has earned lots and lots of awards from national and on international levels as well as she's also associated with many, many associations and NGOs where she is doing, uh, you know, social work also. We welcome you, ma'am. And uh, we are very happy you are over here. Please let us know that your journey in Sunbeam School, how you started up and you have reached over here. Over to you. I'll, I'll make it uh, very short. Uh, yes, it's been about 27 years uh, that I've been there with uh, Sunbeam. I started as a teacher. Uh, moved up uh, slowly to uh, be an academic head and then the principal and now I'm a director at uh, the Sunbeam group. The journey has been very very enriching because I think when we uh, where I think a lot of us have this journey when you really go, you know kind of rise up from uh, the level where you are in direct touch with the children and you're teaching them and then you start designing the curriculum of the institution that you are with your uh, inputs just tend to become a little bit more realistic more practical because you know you uh, you've experienced the the problems that the children uh, really face or the parents face or the teachers face so whenever you have an interaction with them when you take feedback from them when you start working with them what finally gets transacted in the classroom and what gets designed i think is something that benefits children so i'm just very happy that uh, a Along with the team, I've been a catalyst uh, somewhere to make a difference to uh, the lives of a lot of children. And uh, it's been a lovely journey at the end of it. And I hope that I keep growing along with the institution. Thank you. That's great, ma'am. And uh, we had been knowing you and looking after or maybe a sort of following you when you are working because you learn from each other. And when you are uh, looking into the people who are doing a remarkable job in the field of education, you learn, you really appreciate them. Thank you, ma'am, and welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Next, we have uh, uh, Dr. Nita Bali. She is the director and principal of GD Koenka World School uh, Gurugram. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, she is a seasoned educator. Dr. Nita Bali has an experience of 38 years in the education field. Ma'am has and has continued to serve well reputed institutions during this time. Ma'am started her career as head of department, Meta D School. An eloquent speaker and trainer, she is a frequent invited guest speaker at various permanent educational conferences throughout the country. Her repertoire includes various curricula such as ICSC, ISC, and CBSC, IBO. 
accelerated programs, PYP and IB, DP and Cambridge accelerated program, IGCSC and AS and A11. In addition, MAM has spread hearted international programs in partnership with Oban High School, Oban Scotland and Wasatch Academy in Utah, USA and the American School of Barcelona. She has also led and had been an integral part of various initiatives. One where she was assigned as a British consulate ambassador or British Council to promote the spirit of international mindness. And more recently, projects that aims at providing emotional health assistance to students overwhelmed by the outgoing pandemic globally. Moreover, MAM has a third English language books for frank educational aids and even an essay book for Madhuban. Recently, education. Today, a premium education magazine rated MAM as amongst the 550 effective principles for the year 2021. She has been conferred with many awards, including Uttarakhand Ratan Award and Jean Laurie Grant and Awards, Exceptional Education Award, to name a few. Again, MAM has two rooms uh, where she has put up her awards, whatever she has earned from last 30, 38 years. And uh, <laughs> now the place is getting less capable where to put up the awards. And I also <laughs> had been seeing ma'am that she is doing a wonderful uh, work over there in the education industry. Ma'am, please let us know about yourself and whatever this, you know, that uh, uh, project you are handling. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chandok. I think you've been very generous with your praise. Um, however, um, as Amrita said, I also started out my journey as a classroom teacher. And for 18 long years, I was the head of department in what was then known as one of the best uh, convent schools, because in those days, I think everybody wanted to send their children to convent schools, because there's this whole thing about uh, children who study in convents speak well and so on. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I was the head of department English uh, for a good 18 years, uh, post which, of course, I took up a vice principalship with APJ School Noida and then uh, have been associated with GD Guainka and in between I had a little interim uh, where I headed a large residential school in uh, Dehradun, followed by a larger school in Mumbai um, and then came back to GD Goenka as the director and principal. So currently uh, director principal for GD Goenka World School and director for the newly incepted uh, GD Goenka High School. Well that's been my journey. Uh, if you talk about projects uh, my latest projects, um, apart from the fact that, of course, we are we are promoting the two programs that we uh, transact in the school, the Cambridge and the IB, uh, where we hope to provide the best inputs to our children so that they can find a niche, uh, find their place under the sun. Uh, what I'm particularly passionate about and what we are promoting big time um, is giving children uh, a voice and what I'd probably call student agency. When I say student agency, what we are promoting is allowing the children to uh, design their own, their own experiences. When I say design their own experiences, we give children the liberty and the agency to conceptualize, uh, to plan, um, to execute their own experiences. And one example of that, I'd make it very crisp, is something called GCEI, which we are doing in association with this large organization worldwide organization of to which I am also an advisor and we are working with children across five continents and the theme that we have picked up is the depletion of water tables across different parts of the world and we are focusing on the Gurgaon region in the Aravali region. So our children are involved in a lot of research based work uh, which probably will lead to some useful culmination and some useful action. So this is what is our latest project. Is that what you wanted to know? I think this is uh, what we are doing currently. Apart from the fact, as I said, my whole aim is to promote learner agency and give our children a voice because I really strongly believe in that. That's great. Ma Welcome, ma'am. And we are very happy that you're over here. Thank you for coming. Next, we have Dr. Dheeraj Malhotra. She is the principal now of Kuwar Global School, Lucknow. Sir is a national awardee and he, uh, he got this award in the year 2005 from the then president Kalam sir, if I don't, uh, if I'm not forgetting that. A white and a yellow belt in Six Sigma, a certified NLP business diploma holder, an educational innovator, author with expertise in Six Sigma in education, academic audits, 
neuro linguistic program llp total quality management in education an experiential educator a cbc resource towards school assessment sqaa cce jit 5s and kazan he has authored over 50 books on computer science for icsc isc cbc students over 30 books of academic interest in the field of education excellence school management teaching excellence and six sigma a former principal of the indian public school new delhi india and education officer at gems education and now ex principal of ni uh, nip guwahati nip guwahati and sir now we are very happy he is back to lucknow with a, a very well established and a branded school core global school uh, in uh, education india with an ample teaching experience of over two decades it may it might be now 30 30 decades uh, three decades sir now he is presently engaged as a principal of uh, Kuwa Global School. Uh, he is a certified trainer for Quality Circle, TQM in education and QCI standard for school acceleration. Six Sigma in education, he has been honored with the President of India National Teachers Award in 2005 and the Best Science Teacher State Awards by the Ministry of Science and Technology. And so many things has to be told about him that will again take a days or two days time to, to tell about him. Uh, welcome, to, uh, sir. And I'm sorry I won't be able to read out your whole resume because your uh, your profile because it's so long and so many awards again you have got. The question in this session I'd like to ask you is that you had been on the both side of the education from the very starting. You had not been on the school level. You had not been a principal or an you know headmaster or something like that. You came into education after excelling in your your particular uh, you know forte. So please let us know that how you shifted from that side to this side. Well, uh, I would say that I started my career way back in April 90 as a computer teacher in one of the schools in Allahabad. That was the Bishop Johnson School. And then I came to teach in my own school. That was the Boise School Allahabad for four long years. And then I had my journey for over 14 years at City Montessori School Lucknow, which is the biggest school in the world with the enrollment of more than 60,000 students. And for sure, after that, uh, after a very brief uh, approach of being a head of a school in Delhi, I switched over to corporate life that was with GEMS education and further with Next Education. Well, during that pre-phase for which was around uh, 10 years again, uh, I nurtured myself to understand what the education industry is all about and how it is catering to the needs of we the educators and then again uh, i transformed uh, that image of mine and came back as a principal in one of the schools in guwahati and now back in lucknow where i served for 14 long years well i believe that uh, the journey has been fascinating because now when i know that how the things are clubbed and how the technology is being developed to equip the schools the best way possible they can integrate quality learning and that is what every time you know a vendor comes to me now i understand that what is the philosophy behind it and the new culture the new recognition and the requisite talks about an interface between the vendor and the school in a big way and it works wonders the live example is before uh, us in the form of Jaswinder sir, you know, who has integrated the education with the English language and it has not been yesterday. It has been over years that he has been into it. Similarly, many companies came and of course, dwelled the quality through which now we don't talk about the chalk and the duster anymore. We talk about integration of technology. We talk about how best the learner can equip himself or herself with the advancement of this very, whether it's AI, whether it is augmented reality, or whether it is any particular thing which we are aiming to dwell at. Well, for sure, I believe that uh, it is high time that we integrate and come together. And this marriage, because earlier in my time when I was the student or you all were the students, there was just a coordination between the publisher and the heads of schools. But now these vendors who play a significant role in actually working on the numbers of your school in terms of the admissions, and that comes as a marriage 
if not just a connect. It's something like a client relationship, not a customer relationship. It's a client relationship which goes like, uh, I would say, years and years. And this type of an integration is certainly going to partner to if we want to move forward to the implementation of NEP in the best possible way. I think this partnership is going to work wonders. And that's my belief over here. Thank you. Absolutely right, sir. Thank you so much, sir, and welcome, sir. Uh, then we have uh, Bhavna Malik, ma'am. She is the principal of lovely public school, uh, Delhi. Ma'am believes that she has strong determination, willpower, self-confidence and ability to work with a group effectively. She is self-directed, enthusiastic educator with a passionate commitment for students, staff development and their learning experience. Ma'am has an experience of over 32 years in education. From 1990 to 1993, she was administrative officer in lovely public school PDVR, then 1994 to 1999 as PGT Commerce, again in PDVR Delhi, 1999 to 2009 as principal of lovely Teachers Training Institute, PDVR. From 2009 onward, she is the principal of Lovely Public Senior Secondary School, PDVR. She is NPSC, uh, that is National Progressive School Conference member. She is the Vice President, Delhi Hindustan Scouts and Guide. She is a member of different clubs, member of CBSC affiliation team. She, is, she has inspected various schools as team member under flagship of CBSC. She has been taking lectures and seminars of teachers in various institutions. She has attended many, uh, many uh, you know, uh, summits like National Education Summit 2012 by CNN News. She has attended two-day school management conclave as an active educator twice. She has actively contributed to literary journals in Hindi, English, and Punjabi, authored a set of 10 books for pre-primary, primary, and middle classes, published articles in Hindi and English on educational, literary, and other subjects, she has been editing of Lovely Times magazine and other publications, promoted many educational cassettes concerned with teaching, active participated in moral educational talks on television channels, provided guidance assistance to the needy children in the field of education. She has been initiating organizing many workshops, seminars on yoga, spiritual discourse, reading books related to new concepts of education, planning and administration. She has published an essay in annual gestures of NPSC. And again, she has been honored with many awards on national and international levels and also associated with associations on national and international level. And uh, it's a journey of 32 years earlier. Ma'am had been in our one of the session and she told her journey that how she has uh, been in lovely public school for so many years. Welcome, ma'am. And we like to know about the experience you are gaining now in the pandemic time. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chandok, for giving me a chance to share this platform with uh, so elite people. Um, although you are uh, generous enough to tell about uh, me, um, I just wanted to quote that I have been also a state of body. Um, uh, three years back, I've got this award. And uh, what for, for me, because... I already have uh, shared my journey in one of uh, your session. I would uh, talk today about my belief system. I, I believe that, uh, you know, that uh, the school is like the triangle. And the, like, there are the three angles. If one is the teacher, one is the ch student. And the last third one is the stakeholder that is our parents and we three togetherly have to work for the benefit of that student although he is also a part of the tangle and uh, what i believe is that that we rather in, because today you know from last two years children are more uh, exposed to the media and uh, we are talking about today the this particular thing only that how your technology can change the complete uh, picture of an education. But um, still what I feel is that the child needs to understand that the most important thing in the life is his health, his happiness, uh, his or her, of course, his joy, his laughter. 
so i feel that uh, we should give more chance to a child to explore on these kind of things uh, i was just reading a few days back that uh, one of the child uh, um, at night time uh, he just woke up and he was acted acting like he, like, like he's sitting and uh, attending some of the class so where is the peace of mind which we are talking we keep talking about the happiness index we keep talking about giving up i was just reading a circular which has been given uh, yesterday by the cpsc and they were also talking about that you give a peace or happiness to the child are we actually actually giving this to our children what is essential are we actually doing something for this so uh, i believe that okay uh, we we should encourage our children uh, because uh, technology could be a very very great help you know uh, bringing this uh, that there, there will be no four walls in classroom you know this whole world where you can teach and this is this is the whole world from where you can learn we used to read uh, we used to give the examples to our children in our life time ki hum cheeti se bhi seekh sakte hain i mean so that is this this uh, particular technology is going to do this kind of miracle we can we can learn anything from anywhere but of course we need to understand that uh, we have we need to check the shift of a child uh, attention also that whether it is going in the right direction or not um, i hope uh, although i'm not very um, sound uh, having a sound uh, technological <laughs> platform i mean uh, uh, not good at that but uh, still i feel that these are the things which uh, we should uh, look after but ma'am again uh, because i understand what you want to say that children are sitting at home from last two years and they are not able to come to the school what is happening to them but if we see on to the positive side that if technology wouldn't had been there what yes. would have happened worse than this yes. at least we are able to connect with them yes that Thanks is what i said now that there is no walls of school no walls four walls of a classroom the entire world is a classroom for a child and again again ma'am we have to uh, you know uh, don't have to uh, stay back at the traditional methods we have to compete in the world we don't have to compete in our country only because our children they move to the outer countries also they get so many opportunities so we have to compete the world and uh, thanks to technology which has entered into and moreover we know everyone that after the pandemic everywhere even to any category of school this mixed blend will keep on going will keep on yes. going. and that yeah. is and that is the only uh, positive sign we had got from these two years yes. that is for sure thank you ma'am and welcome ma'am next we have uh, mr balwinder uh, jaswinder singh sir is the md and ceo of words word english language lab sir is the ex founder director of design mate which is now a reliance group company sir has worked as a consultant to the government of bahrain through unesco uh, passionate edtech leader wordsworth is used by over 1 million learners annually through more than 3000 plus schools and colleges uh, he has launched the world's first sanskrit language lab and many myth more things are over there about him but we like to understand and uh, hear from him himself sir my first question welcome sir and my uh, for coming over here and uh, because the concept of the show is that whatever is happening as a non technology or whatever is happening uh, good for the industry for the education industry we do call someone and uh, we are very grateful that you have come on the show so sir how did it came into your mind to start up this english language lab okay first of all thank you so much mr chandok for having me here and good evening to all the panelists uh, see my coming into this language industry is uh, is a mystery and a story uh, our current you know i was actually the founder director of a company known as design mate which made the world's first 3d animated 4d animated and 5d animated content which is you know currently used by a lot of companies uh, the likes of uh, educoms were riding on that product 
we were even awarded by Dr. Abdul Kalam for the kind of work that we've done. But 15 years back, I sold back my stake because uh, there was something that I wanted to move on. And at that time, you know, I had another company which was into IT training, like what uh, Dheeraj sir says, you know, into IT. So I too was uh, teaching people on the IT skills. And at that time, we were given the project of training the entire, all the employees of the government of Gujarat during the time of Modi ji, who's our current prime minister, that way he was the chief minister there. He picked a company and said that you have to train 100,000 people for language skills because you've heard of a vibrant Gujarat, something, you know, where they get investors. So a lot of investors had come into Gujarat, but the major problem was Gujarat had the typical problem of, you know, language uh, issues. You know, it was all mostly into Gujarati and a little bit of Hindi. So that project, you know, he picked us up without a tender. He said, this is the company he's going to do. You know his uh, working style. And that's where we did. We were very, very excited, you know. But he put a caveat. He said one thing, that every one setup that you put up in urban Gujarat, two setups have to be put up in rural Gujarat. Phir bhi we were happy we went on to our surprise or to, you know, we were so uh, into such a lot of trouble that we were not able to find good people who could train in the rural sector. And, you know, knowing Modi ji is a taskmaster, every Saturday we had to report to his OSD. So when we started doing this project, we were, we were supposed to train 100,000 people every year. Our major challenge was teachers. So what we did was, since I was into content creation long back, we started creating content for English so that even a teacher who's not so good could deliver better. So what does technology do? What does content do? It doesn't do anything. It supports a teacher to do better. See, we have to understand, it will not go and teach whatever you may do, but that particular uh, content or uh, aspect, what you do is we make it in a way that the teacher who's not very sound, who's not very good with the help of that can move further. It's like, you know, somebody who needs a stick to walk. It's a teacher gets technology to go to rise higher. So that's how we started and we got into this. And then we saw an opportunity into schools since I was already working with schools and colleges. So today we work with around 2000, I uh, sorry, 3000 schools and a million students. So that's the story. I was forced into, I'm not a language person, but I'm actually a pedagogy person. Like, you know, uh, UNESCO picked us up to pick me up to work on the, uh, how could we Im uh, integrate ICT in Bahrain? Because at that time, girls were not allowed to study in Bahrain. So they wanted to put a network right into each and every house where they were able to beam down the uh, lessons. So that's the project that I worked on. We, I realized that, you know, technology and ed tech is a huge, huge, huge sector. One should invest into it. And that's how I have come into this. So that's the long and the short story of mine. That's great, sir. And uh, you had been working since long, uh, more than three decades? Yes, yes. My company is 31 years old. Wordsworth as a product is 15 years old. This is our 16th year. That's great, sir. All the best, you, sir. And you're doing Thank a you. uh, wonderful job for the, for the industry. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Uh, welcome, sir. Okay, let's come up to the next phase of the uh, show. We'll come up to the questioning round. And uh, I'll come up to uh, Amrita Bhavan, ma'am. Ma'am, the first question I'd like to ask you that what according to you is the importance of language learning? So, um, I mean, language is uh, something which, uh, I mean, is I think possibly one of the most important things in anyone's life. If you would just imagine uh, you know, I don't know when we are talking about years and eons back when there was no language. If we put ourselves in that condition, I think each of us would wonder, oh God, how do I manage? How did life actually move on when there was no language? So I think it was one of the most path breaking uh, inventions. Uh, language would be considered as one of the most path breaking invention, which obviously evolved over time. We all know about, you know, the way language has come up. But uh, when, when we, you know, that very feeling of how would life be without language gives us the answer to uh, the importance of language. It's very difficult to communicate. I don't think we would have been here at all. Uh, I mean, of course, technology is playing a very important role here, but then forget the technology part. Even generally, it would be so difficult for us to communicate if language wouldn't be there. How would we express our thoughts? How would we express our ideas again if language wasn't there? How would we understand each other? So I think language is one of the most important things which brings all of us closer to each other because the moment I understand you and you understand me, there's a great bond 
that uh, kind of comes up between all of us. The, the moment we bond, the moment we understand each other, that's the time I think we empathize with each other. Quite. You know, when we are talking today of social emotional learning and the emotional part uh, of a child or everything, Everyone, uh, the mental well-being being the most important, I think one of the most important base of that, again, is language. We bond, we socialize, we talk together, we think on the same platform because there's language that connects, connects each one of us. I think another very important part of language is it helps us to be more creative. It helps us to be aesthetically very sound. Uh, we express ourselves in beautiful ways, in different ways. So I think to a large extent, in case, uh, you know, we're very linguistically and creatively, uh, creatively um, uh, inclined, language becomes our source of uh, expression and communication. And I think one of the most important things in language, which I would give a lot of importance to, we understand our culture, our heritage, uh, because of language, there are thousands and thousands of different languages all over the world. Each of these languages have evolved over time. And if you study this language, it takes you back to the root of uh, so many different civilizations and so many different uh, traditions of, uh, you know, lakhs and lakhs of people all over the world. And I think the moment we know each other's heritage, traditions, and we respect uh, our traditions and uh, heritage, we tend to, again, have an understanding for each other. We try to understand that we are different, yet there is some commonality between all of us. And I think when each of us understand each other better, there is going to be more peace in the world. So I would connect language learning also to a much, much higher uh, uh, aim and motive and uh, outcome of uh, bringing us all together, respect for each other would also increase and uh, there would be more peace in the world. So I think language learning should be given great importance when it comes to uh, educators uh, in schools. Uh, we have to, and then I think different types of languages is, is important. There, there is supposed to be no chip uh, on the shoulder by learning any one particular language. Each language is beautiful and should be learned for the fact that uh, the language is there with a lot of richness in it. Absolutely right, ma'am. You're absolutely right. Thank you so much, ma'am. One more question I'd like to ask you, ma'am. How do you manage all the schools, 25 schools together? <laughs> yes, uh, I think uh, many of us here, including Neeta, uh, many of us handle a lot of schools. But you know, you manage, it's not about you being able to handle schools. It's the team that's there behind yeah. you. You know, with you, I would say behind is a very bad word to use with you uh, who actually make it possible. So I think it's only possible because I have a very, very uh, passionate and rich and uh, a very evolved team with me. And that's what makes it possible. And in my introduction, I actually thought later that I should have added something. Uh, the best part of uh, the kind of work that I do, which I really enjoy is, we don't only really have a number of schools, that's uh, one issue. We actually are running schools in two and three tier towns of uh, Uttar Pradesh. So, you know, we have schools in places like a Badoi or a Mo and many places you would probably not even know that exist. So when you go to these kind of places and when you see the, the passion amongst uh, children of of these areas I, I mean and you trust you know you try to make a difference in their lives I think that's where you get the passion to try and do much better every day because I think the fire in the belly is there in these children and uh, personally I feel they are the ones who are going to rule the country tomorrow uh, just because they want to prove themselves and I want to give more power to these children in these areas. So I think that's a beautiful uh, uh, part of my journey where you tend to make a difference in these children's lives. Ma'am, you that's see a lot great, of hunger in their eyes. You know, when you go to these, the hunger makes us run. Very well said, ma'am. That's, that's the fact. In the two, uh, tier two especially tier. in the remote areas, when you go to the remote areas, the small areas, the small towns, they have more hunger than the city students. True. They want to do something. They want to compete and they want to do something. Mm -hmm. Of course, they want, they are the future of the nation. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. We'll come up to uh, Dr. Nita Bali, ma'am. 
Ma'am, again, uh, we like to know your views about the importance of language learning amongst the students. Ma'am, you're muted. Yes, ma'am. Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, uh, language learning, as Amrita very appropriately uh, mentioned, language learning is integral. In fact, that's something that comes so naturally to all living beings, all, all children, particularly when they are growing up in their initial years, whether they go to a school or they don't go to a school. I think language is something that comes very instinctively to everybody. Um, immaterial of whether you are formally educated or you're not formally educated. It just comes very, very naturally. Um, having said that, um, if I talk about language learning and if we talk about what are the advantages of language learning, then I would say that the most significant advantage of language learning, I think, is the fact that um, language learning introduces people to a lot of customs and values. It is through language that you learn customs and values that belong to uh, different societies. Uh, you learn, you encourage, you're encouraged to think from a different point of view because you're learning about these customs um, and values through language. And I think language is uh, probably the most powerful medium for expressing empathy for other people. Uh, also, having said that, give me a moment, please. I have to turn this off. just so sorry uh, apart from that i think uh, there are huge benefits health benefits of uh, language learning when i say health benefits of language learning i'm talking about i've seen ch children learning multiple languages when they learn multiple languages uh, you know it's known it's a known fact that it uh, slows down the effect of dementia um, and uh, also helps children to build a cognitive reserve when you are learning more and more languages because your brain is stimulated to process information. So because of that, I think um, definitely enhances your ability to assimilate and uh, learn. And children are generally less inhibited compared to uh, adults. So they're able to take to language learning very, very quickly. Um, also, I think as I, when I started, I said that it widens your horizons. It widens your entire worldview. Because uh, when you're learning multiple languages, not merely are you setting yourself up uh, for better jobs um, as a polyglot, as somebody who knows many languages, you're setting yourself up for a better career. Um, but also the fact that you, your, your, your vocabulary and your grammatical structures are more refined, uh, you communicate better, you're more articulate, uh, you come through uh, as, as um, a good communicator, you're able to um, express yourself better uh, you're able to um, throw out your ideas much better and people are able to take them in so i think um, language in fact uh, is is uh, i mean as a teacher of english i may sound biased i've been a teacher of english for many many years and a classroom teacher for almost 18 years so for me language learning is the thing um, you know of course one can't discount the fact that learning of math i mean numeracy skills or sciences is any less important but I really think language learning um, completely takes you to a different level and should be given a lot of importance. And I'm sure that Jaswinder Ji agrees with me. <laughs> Ma'am, it's a difference between a homo sapien and a human. Yes. Language made us from a homo sapien to a human is only yes. because of language. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Even when we talk out to the parents also, we say it like this, that uh, English is the base of all the subjects. Even in maths also, you have word, uh, you have word problems sentences are over there but actually it is not english it is actually language hmm. if you are not Any able language. to understand the language you won't be able to understand that even and you will be not be able to communicate also right so language is very important as far as everyone is related it, it's not only about the students only thank you thank you Nita, ma'am. next we'll come to dr dheeraj marutra sir sir what do you believe that language learning enhances problem solving skills and creative thinking capacity also and other abilities also well taking a lead from neeta ma'am 
And of course, uh, Amrita ma'am, I would uh, add on to the point that the necessity of learning language has not only brought in the importance of uh, English language in particular, but also the computer programming languages, you know, sure. as a part of the importance of coding in our lives. And here we tend to reflect them about the idea of coding with reference to, say, for example, gone are the days of basic COBOL, Fortran and other things. But for sure, uh, when I got the, the learning done, for sure, but uh, now it's we talk about uh, Python or maybe C++ or Java, every language integrates problem solving skills and the problem definition skills. The whole idea about it is that design thinking approach where we tend to reflect on an idea and do some creative framing through the sentences which catches and figures out as a part of an algorithm coming to the real life for the children in the classroom for sure learning language tends to be a part of their learning and living for particularly even if you want to convey to your siri or to alexa you have to frame your words in NLP, which is the natural language processing format. And that way, the integration of the understanding of English language, in addition to any language for say, because they say I'm going to accept command in even in Marathi or Hindi or Sanskrit or whatsoever. So that attribute counts a lot. And for sure, as uh, people, my dear colleagues have already uh, brought in forward that language learning is an active process that bridges the connect between the two individuals. And for sure, it begins at birth and continues uh, throughout the life. It talks about the figurative format as an educator. I do feel that I need to reflect on the ideology of the importance of even foreign languages keeping them that confidence uh, level to be brought forward that yes. And not only this, every business has a language. Every uh, attribute has a language. When we talk about doing an experiment in lab, it talks about a language. It talks about how you're going to be starting and ending the job. Whether it's music, it also has a language. The way we are going to be, you know, being a part of it dance as a language so if we go poking into it it is the identity of any and every subject that how to go about it there has to be a language for everything and that language is when we order a product from amazon the only thing which comes is rather than we type it out instead of going through that paper which comes out with no reading glasses probably we just search out that data the product on the youtube how to probably the other day i ordered one router extender you know so i had no option but to go to the youtube and find out how to you know get it activated so that's the language which we need to connect to that the language of everything and individual talks about that language as a part of communication but for sure the children need to be integrated to learning languages as a part of learning everything the learning of language actually guides them to learn about all the subjects the best way possible well there is a language of internet there is a when we talk about digital body language I heard about uh, body language when I thought of writing a book on digital body language as how and what way you are going to be reacting when you're going to work in the cloud and that digital body language idea crammed up, you know, and then I compiled some of my uh, productivity on ground that how I'm going to be working on online as to react and respond to the mail or to the messages or to the WhatsApp comments and everything. So that's the language framework that learning another language also talks about learning majorly for academic development, for greater cognitive development, as what uh, Nita ma'am rightly pointed out. So there are means and ways to expand the horizon of being a learner and language henceforth plays a vital role to it. Thank you. That's great, sir. But we can say that language uh, is there everywhere. It is not about only English language. It may be in any language. It may be Hindi, it may be Sanskrit, it may be Marathi, or it may be French, or it may be the you know computer language also. So language is the most important. Wherever you are entering, the first thing you will find is language. If you are not knowing the language, you won't be able to do anything. That is for sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Then we'll come up to uh, uh, Dr. Bhavna Malik. 
uh, ma'am, we like to know because already we are knowing that language is very important. So, what do you feel? What is the role of technology in language learning? Uh, as uh, I just uh, take up whatever uh, Amrita, Nita, Mr. Dhira just said, that of course I will say that uh, uh, that technology has profoundly changed, uh, you know, the entire education system. So, of course, it has uh, um, changed uh, the whole look of a language also, you know, um, yeah, the technology just uh, expanded the excess of any kind of information. You know, firstly, when we were children, we used to keep everything, you know, there was a retention of information in your mind only. But uh, now you don't need a chip in your mind, but you just need a chip in your uh, gazette. And um, more storage of information, better presentation of uh, information. You can easily share your knowledge with other people uh, if you know the language. I just uh, want to take an example, uh, uh, a practical example in uh, at, because most of the time we usually are spending at home these days from last uh, around 18 months. So my son uh, was uh, wanted to learn a new language, uh, Spanish, because he thought that uh, it will help him uh, when he will be doing his masters. So now there was no teacher, nothing was there. So he told me that, um, I even wrote uh, the name also. Some app was there that uh, Duolingo. 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 Yeah, Duolingo. So he downloaded that and he started learning Spanish. And um, in this journey of 18 months only, the technology helped him in so much that uh, uh, he has started, you know, using a small sentence and started framing. And uh, he was talking to me that uh, the small activities are there, uh, some kind of the pictures they are sharing. So instead of just boring lecture that you have to speak uh, mine this way or that way, uh, he was um, just talking to me yesterday when I was talking about this language. He said that whenever I uh, see those uh, pictures and all, those pictures are also speaking. So my dopamine start releasing and I learn better. So um, I would say that uh, it's a miracle that uh, the children are learning with that. Uh, I still remember a few years back, I went to Goa and the small children were selling something, you know, on uh, that beach. And they were so fluent in talking in English. But when you ask them that how much they have studied, they have not even gone to the school. But this is the exposure, you know, when you are experimenting, you are learning through somebody, you are copying that and it becomes a habit. The same thing today, this uh, technology is also doing. Through technology, we are having so many, uh, I mean, the classroom, now the classroom is your Google classroom, you know, um, I still remember, it's just a part of joke. I know um, I uh, talk about the things in different manner, uh, but we used to say, aata, chalo Google auntie se So this Google auntie has become entered in our life and it has given us the language. You know, it's a beauty that, you know, that with what we are talking about, uh, the way, um, mixing up the things but we are doing something good this technology is actually doing miracles in our life so of course uh, i would say that uh, technology actually actually has given you know it it is it is giving a uh, interest in learning also the small things uh, when we are watching now it is not that if your local language is only uh, Hindi or English, no. But you can you can experiment with any any kind of uh, language. This is what I feel. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. It is for sure that 
technology has paid uh, uh, paid a, a lot of importance towards language learning like you said your son wanted to learn uh, a different language and he was able to do without a teacher to through net thank you ma'am next i'll come to jaswinder singh sir so because you have heard with, from the all the eminent guests that how the technology i mean how uh, good the language learning is and uh, but you have to make it like mavana ma'am said that you have to make it interesting if it is not interesting student won't take interest in that so how does your language lab uh, works with that and is it that you are working with only english language lab or other uh, your languages also um, over to you yeah thank you sir so first of all um, anything to today's child you have to make it interesting and challenging if they do not find any challenge or any interest they will keep it because they have a lot of other options so whether it's science whether it's mathematics whether it's history or language it has to be made interesting right so what we've done is we've like you know uh, ma'am just said uh, bhavna ma'am said uh, that you know uh, when a picture speaks you feel better right so what we've done is we've actually used a lot of themes a lot of characters of how in a day to day situation would you communicate right what we've done is we've actually made it the way you acquire your own mother tongue sir aapne maine hum sab ne hindi school mein jaane ke baad nahi seekhi we were able to communicate in hindi even before we went to school right so what happened that was a situation so what we do is we create these situations and that is what the students are supposed to process so they acquire language naturally you know like you have a natural uh, language for computers okay you have a natural language for acquiring english also a natural way so if you are able to give an environment which is natural not rules not with just grammar hum sab hindi bol rahe hain par mujhe pata nahi hum mein se kitno ko vyakaran pura aata hai lekin hindi mein hum galti nahi karte so that's exactly what happens with english what you know where we have failed sometimes sometimes back is we only focus on grammar to start with and that is where the child gets pushed back so what you need to do is to ex expose them to a lot of language listening a lot of exposure to be able to communicate and give them that simulation those situation that is what has to be taken up so that is the answer to your first question what is the second question sir sir uh, is it only english language or okay, other yeah, yeah. languages so also? so coming up with this english you know i'll, I'll just close that is that english actually there is a framework and that framework has been designed so beautifully which is an international framework if you follow that framework language learning will be very interesting natural and easy that's one thing so what we've done is we picked up that framework and we've now coming up with the french language also which is in the foreign languages but for india we are the first company or for the world first company to develop a sanskrit language so i tell you uh, our current uh, secretary education was sometimes back secretary education in gujarat right in the uh, central government now i've been i've worked with her i've worked under on a lot of projects and you know i had i was actually told that the government is looking at you know promoting sanskrit as a cultural language so we started working two years back on how to develop sanskrit i too had sanskrit during my school days but let me tell you i almost flunked it was boring it was not interesting it was difficult or rather i would say my teacher did not make it as interesting as it should have sounded so what we started doing we started working back and then we met the jain munis so i don't know if you know you know uh, gujarat uh, has a lot of jains right to so jain mein agar kisi ko diksha leni hai they have to know sanskrit as a language you know during that training period so i actually found out how do they do this and that's what we did so we we picked up people and then we designed a program for communicative sanskrit and then grammar coming in the end and you know what to my surprise i've realized there's no grammar structure in sanskrit though there's huge grammar now i always give this example uh, dheeraj sir and uh, ladies that if i have to say my name is jaswinder you say mama naam jaswinder right but if i say jaswinder mama naam that is also okay mama jaswinder naam that is also okay naam jaswinder mama is also okay so it's a beautiful language which if you know it's not about whose language whether it's a north indian south indian or a hindu language not that is not the point it is the most structured language and that is why in germany they have said if you want to do coding go first do 
Sanskrit and there are more Sanskrit being taught in Germany than in India. So I was given the task from Ministry of HRD to create that. And once we developed it, we were given the work of implementing these Sanskrit apps in all the 1100 Kendri Vidyalas of India. So we've already finished 570. So that's what it is. So we've started working on this. And when we started working on this, we said, why not some other language? So then came the French, which is almost underway. And then Spanish is the next, which we are working on. So language, let me tell you, all languages can be acquired in the same way. If you know two or three languages, the fourth language is going to be very easy. The only thing is you need to know is that you need to speak a lot. You need to listen a lot. And if you make that interesting, it comes back to your first question. How would you make a child go through that? Like ma'am son said, you know, Duolingo, it is, you know, through pictures that they give you vocabulary. So they give you uh, smaller vocabulary, power words, then they connect those words and then they slowly they make you do the thing. And it is not hurried up. You can do it at your own pace. And that's what needs to be done. Don't push language down the throat. Let it happen to them. And I think that is what will make it interesting. You're doing a wonderful job, sir. I mean, uh, I have never heard so much about <laughs> this thing and done this. Uh, session I'm coming to know about that although I had a word with you before the session also and it's great so you're going up with Hindi also you're going up with English Hindi Sanskrit, Sanskrit and French, French is coming up and French is coming up French and other languages are in the pipe uh, uh, other languages is, also in the pipeline yeah so we've been asked to do Gujarati Tamil and Telugu uh, we don't have the resources so we're looking because you see in NEP 2020 you talk about it they're talking about the three language formula Right. The so one is the local language. The other is the foreign language, it's English in our case, though English is not a foreign language for India, it's a second language. And the third is the cultural language, which is Sanskrit. So the local language, though I'm saying I, it is beautiful concept. Let mathematics and science be taught in their local language. Let the students understand. Let the teachers be able to teach. And, you know, you will not have dearth of teachers if you're allowing them to teach in their local language. So that happens. Let the concepts be very clear and a student can acquire up to five languages by the age of eight years. We are talking about three yeah. languages. So we are now working on how do we work something that we get into other main languages, Hindi, Gujarati, Punjabi, uh, Bengali, uh, Amita ma'am, just because I wanted to get the flavor of I have a colleague who sits next to me. She's a Bengali. So slowly I started picking up words. What to understand? How do we get another language without going to the series of uh, you know, grammatical systems. So what we do is the most common words that you do use in day to day. And that's how we need to teach them. They are not supposed to do PhD or they're not supposed to be uh, something in a language. They need to know how to use that language. So that's what the whole process is. Since we master three, four languages, the other languages should be easy. That's what I think. But it all has to be worked on. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You're working so much on the language subjects and then all the English, Hindi, French and Sanskrit. That, that's of you, sir. Thank you so much. We'll come up to the next round where already we are getting late. So we'll come up to Amrita Berman, ma'am. Uh, we would like to know that uh, in today's world, teachers and children need a flexible and effective way of learning. If we have seen that during these two years, even the children don't want to pick up their books. They can they can work on the gadgets, but they don't want to pick up their books and learn. What do you say about that, ma'am? So I completely agree. I think um, uh, things have become much easier in making uh, learning both for uh, the child and the teacher um, in the in these few in these past two years because of the role of technology. Both effectivity and flexibility, I think, have taken different uh, dimensions altogether. But I think for time immemorial. The fact is that we should be having learning which is both flexible and effective. Otherwise, it's, it's never a satisfying feeling for either the teacher or the student. So let's first talk about the flexibility part. And especially with the role of technology, I think flexibility has really played, a, has taken a completely different, uh, uh, you know, dimension, as I, I said. I think it's extremely important that children learn at their own pace. And I was really uh, very interested in uh, what Jaswinder uh, Ji was just talking about. Um, you know, uh, he's also talking about role of technology when it comes to flexibility. Children need to learn at the time that they are ready to learn. Every time my mood is not there in the course of the day to learn. 
So I think the kind of uh, patterns that we have in uh, most of the schools, including our own school on the offline physical format, you have a timetable. Now you have to come to school at this time, go at this time. This is your time for maths and this is your time for science. And actually, it's just one of those days when I'm not up to it and I just don't want to learn. So my teacher is continuing because she also has a job to do. And uh, what is a child really uh, taking? So I think this blended format that we are coming to is going to bring, tech, uh, you know, a flexibility uh, in a very, very different way. Whatever I am teaching today, even if it is in the offline, if I'm supporting it in the online format, my child has the flexibility of probably going home, revisiting what has been taught. He really didn't understand what was being taught, but he goes home, revisits and does it in his own way and learns better. So I think flexibility has to be brought in because even that teaches children to be independent learners. I learn not only to learn it at my pace and at my time, I also get to learn by experimenting more on my own. After all, if you're talking about a Google and internet, everything is not wrong about it, you know. Many time we say oh why google but why not google that doesn't mean that everything that you do is only through google it is supported a lot by what your teacher is wanting to tell you but if your teacher gives you a task or if you don't understand getting into a google and getting your uh, material in a different way better way easier way the way i want it as a student what's the harm in that and i think that what even the teachers are today using various resources, you know, various resources to be able to get what they wanted to teach to the children in different ways. So when there is variety, when we speak about the edtech tools, for example, being used on the online platform so effectively, I think some of those classes are far more effective than the physical classes. Because children are really getting interested with all different patterns and ways in which the children, uh, teachers are bringing things up uh, to the students. So I think their flexibility is extremely important. And if there is no flexibility, we are not going to be creating satisfied and independent learners of tomorrow. Coming to effectivity, I think effectivity, again, is uh, goes hand in hand with flexibility. For anything to be effective, the, the very simple thing would be what I set out to teach my child, my child is able to do in the way that he wants to, understands, gets satisfied and therefore is happy with what he's learned today. It's a very simple thing. Effectivity means what you're wanting to tell me, I need to understand and maybe go even beyond it. You need to give that skill to me that after you've told me what you wanted to tell me, I should be able to apply it and possibly take that knowledge to a different level altogether. So I think for that, again, it's extremely important that teachers teach in a manner that there are no gaps in learning at all. So I teach in the most age appropriate, interesting way as a teacher. Besides that, my assessments have to be designed in a way that I get to know what is the level of my child, where my child is. If my child hasn't understood what's the gap, I should be able to give the feedback, remediate for my child. Once there is good remediation, my child understands and my child goes very happy. So I think these are very simple things which have been spoken about for times immemorial, but today they have taken different dimensions and actually it's become so much easier and more effective in, with the help of technology. I think I see my teachers so much more happier. I see my kids so much more happier over the uh, past uh, two years that it's amazing, especially in the last four months when the blended format was happening. They were coming to school. They were doing their offline. They were doing their online. They could visit things on their own. I think it's been the best journey in the last uh, four years and things are only going to improve. So I think if tomorrow, we need to have less frustrated, more happy and satisfied kids, kids, effectivity in uh, teaching and flexibility in teaching. Both have to go hand in hand. That's great. Ma so that, I can conclude that from a teacher's perspective, it has become now child-oriented learning now. The teacher has to come down to the level of the child, what does he want or she wants. And even technology converts the hard work into the smart work. So teachers are also happy because with the help of technology, their work has been lessened and they are able to give their perfection. You, they get the perfection with the technology. That is what I think you wanted to say. Thank you, ma'am. We'll come up to Nita Bali, ma'am. 
Ma'am, what are your views uh, that about the flexibility and effectiveness of uh, language learning? Uh, Mr. Chandra, I would say that, you know, teachers set out uh, at the beginning of the day with very well uh, planned out work, lesson plans that are very meticulously done. Uh, but during the course of the day, I think a lot of us as teachers really need to throw those plans to the wind and take out a bag of tricks so that we can uh, get the children interested in what they're interested in learning. It's, you know, in fact, I have realized over a period of time is uh, teaching learning is not really about what you want to teach the young. It's about what they want to learn or what they want to assimilate. So you really have to tweak your style. You really have to create content at the spur of the moment using your ingenuity to be able to catch the interest of the young. So I would say flexibility is by far the most um, significant quality, the ability to improvise, the ability to be able to create at the spur of the moment, um, you know, the, the desire uh, to ensure that what you're teaching is assimilated by the children requires a lot of flexibility, which also means that you cannot adhere to a set plan. You cannot adhere to a set of guidelines that you have been given. On a given day, you may not be able to teach what you really set out to teach. Uh, so I think there we need to, I, I, I appreciate those uh, people who are able to, uh, you know, uh, who are able to put aside the time constraints and are able to cater to the needs of the children. Um, so flexibility is by far, um, the most significant skill that teachers need to learn because giving children a choice uh, about where, when, and how what they should learn and what they should learn uh, is, is very, very significant. I think she has lost, lost her connection. It's okay. Uh, now we will come up to Dheeraj sir. Dheeraj sir, we'll also like to know from you that uh, is it all about language learning only or it should be right thing with the best result? Because well, ma'am had been talking and hmm. everybody had been talking that Google Baba, Google Google auntie is over there and you can ask anything from her. But sometimes even we also get confused. If you remember, sometimes when we are asking the Google map about the route, many a times they are wrong. So we need the perfect thing, like perfect thing that the student, if it is, if the, he or she is using it, should not get diverted. You know, when they will pick up these things and they won't get the right way to get through. So that thing will become, you know, into, into the mind that we won't be able to learn that. But when we are get, getting a right concept, a right app or a right lab, whatever we say, the students will be able to do more good because straight away going to the Google, Google anti won't help always. So it is better that the children should be, should be, you know, given the tools, the, you know, technology tools where they can effectively use it according to us or according to the things which are needed. What do you say, sir? Well, uh, very true. The fact is that the children are getting more dependent on technology and for say, if I say so, they are more getting dependent on the not so clear videos available on YouTube. They are depending on these third party vendors, I would say not vendors rather, but individual teachers who have come out out of the blue through the pandemic uh, where the everybody, you know, every individual has a propped up channel on the YouTube now. So they are pretty comfortable that even if I miss uh, a class of mine or tomorrow's session that I, I can very well go and Google, you know, that topic and get through through the YouTube available for all of us at any leisure, even through the mobile phone. So I believe the children have brought in this tendency over the couple of years uh, that they have become standalone learners. And for that reason, the discipline in the class is being affected in a much, much larger way, which may be physical class or maybe online class. Because they think that teachers, oh, come on, I was very well happy with that video. I'll send you the link, you know, something they say like that. It has become, I've got a link on that subject. I know I could make it. I saw it five times and now I'm pretty clear about it, you know. So they are something like standalone encyclopedia or a dictionary at a glance they are trying to pursue with. So 
I think that if teachers don't do well in their classroom now, they'll be losing their recognition otherwise. So that is what even I tell my teachers that you need to be innovative, creative, and don't just showcase your presence in the classroom as a teacher, because even if they are present there, they will sleep with their eyes open. And that is what is happening in the classrooms of today. Earlier, they were dependent on coaching teachers. Now they think, oh, it's YouTube, you know, anything and everything can be accessed well. And there are really, really many, many good teachers who have put in their YouTube videos also, which has proved because they say, oh, that teacher from that place, that teacher from that place, you know, they, they coin their structured uh, way of learning that wo usse padlenge, wo usse padlenge, wo wala video unke liye hai, you know, so even if the teachers, they don't come out with that creativity in the classroom, they'll lose their recognition not only for the school, particularly for the teacher. And that subject, of course, gets a standalone reference only uh, during the exams. So the things are not very, very easy to sail through. As teachers and educators, we need to look out. And hence, the CBSC is also working hard on training these teachers to be innovative, creative in large numbers you know, whether it is in integration of artificial intelligence or integration of augmented reality, virtual reality and other things, you know, every second day we get a circular that you have to put in your teachers for this course and that course, but children are not understanding. So for that reference, teachers need to be well, well preserved with the empowerment among themselves. And here comes the language of learning any subject, language for learning any subject, I say. It is not only English language, it is the respect and the recognition for all the subject which goes well, only when they are communicating well in the language, the communication part, whatever, whether they are singing a song or they are telling their name in the class, it is all through the language. And that is what way you can create a rapport, whether it's a teacher in the class, or is the child in the class, uh, whether it's online, offline, again, you have to learn the language to communicate and the words and even work on your words vocabulary. You can't be just be thinking and being happy with A for apple, B for boy and C for cat when we talk about A for Android, B for Blackberry and C for cloud. So that <laughs> means we are looking forward to. I agree with you, sir, because students have become much smarter now. And uh, if teacher wants to survive, they have to upgrade them. If they will not upgrade, they will lose their identity. It has been in the market industry also and here in education also, if you not update. And that is why I uh, agree with you that CBSC is sending so many circulars to us that this is, I mean, so many free workshops they are giving to the teachers. But the only problem is if the teachers will not upgrade them, we won't be able to do anything as a, as a team. That is for sure. Thank you so point much. There, if, I, if you allow me to add sure, here. Sure. See, we all should not forget that these students of today are technology residents and we are technology migrants. One. Second, age is with them, not with us. So what we need to do as teachers, know the basic functions of computing so that you also get the information where the kid gets. And yes, it is time to now... Stop being a sage on the stage and be a facilitator, be an enabler and learn with them, work with them. So the flipped classroom model is the best model where it will you know, help the teacher also because the kids are going to have access to more testing. So what I say is when you tell them what you're going to do tomorrow, they actually go look for it on Google. Unfortunately, instead of five lines, 10 lines, they find 5,000 or 10,000 lines. That is where the learning is happening to know what is good enough from my point. And then we ask them to present. Presentation skills come in, communication skills come in, subject knowledge comes in, and the teacher becomes an enabler. This is the only way our teachers can compete or be there with this technology resident species of ours. So, because this, if, if this thing goes through the teacher to the student, it will be better. Yes, ma'am. Just wanted to add, actually, I wanted to say something quite similar to what Jaswinderji is saying. Uh, with the role of technology, I think as teachers, what's extremely important when there is, a, you know, information galore everywhere. So when you go, you just put in one word and so many things uh, come down. And uh, many things are not correct also, as we as you mentioned, and rightly so. I think the, the skill, the teacher that really needs to teach their children along with technology is the skill of sifting the right from the wrong what's there, they, you know, what should be, uh, there should be a proper guide. 
by the teacher and over the years children really get to learn that skill what is it that's correct on google what is it i should be taking in and what is it that's really nonsense and i should be sifting because he uh, just when there is rightly saying that with time technology is only going to increase you know children are far smarter than we are today in getting the right kind of information from technology i may get a little lost in in that ocean of you know knowledge but children don't children are quite smart and i think as teachers something that we need to learn and keep you know specifying or you know talking to our children about so that we can say ma'am because uh, if the teachers are not giving the children go to the technology and they say their videos on the youtube or somewhere on the google and they learn it if this goes through the teacher and uh, it will be it will be much much better but so teachers need to be more don't have you don't have a control over that so we need to teach our kids the difference between facts and opinions that's how we start when we teach them how to read right ma'am so when we teach them what is skimming scanning we also tell them what's a fact and an opinion so actually we will have to train them to learn or to to learn to differentiate what is workable for them and what is not because you open up a sea it is a sea of it is the ocean of data which is correct not correct as uh, amita ma'am said so our kids need to be made smarter because you will not be able to control what they read what they see and what they get so that's the only way out and a lot of focus has to be done on that in the early years that's a big topic for discussion <laughs> yeah. let's move up to let's move up to the next question bhavna ma'am uh, nep 2020 lays stress on experiential learning pedagogy where an extensive use of technology should be made uh, for teaching and learning what do you say about this ma'am uh i think i'm um unmuted myself okay mr chandok uh, in your question what you said that uh, of course uh, the experiential learning is what experiential learning is nothing but it's a method of doing or learning something through your experience when you are your hands are on the experience today i was uh, just before this uh, i was uh, attending a workshop of uh, as uh, it is uh, said that there are a lot of uh, cbse workshop and there also they were putting lot of stress on the uh, on the way that the classroom should be like a you know a lab where children they do they keep doing instead of having all traditional learning method which were the primarily are uh, everything was based on that uh, it is like uh, they do something and they learn uh, i uh, ex- uh, agree uh, what uh, mr deeraj j- just said that uh, the although the blending way of learning is very important where technology is also important teacher i was also talking the same thing to my teacher that if we are not going to give something new to our children in a different manner the google teacher is there they can learn everything from there in a right manner or wrong manner but of course because the exposure is there they are learning this is actually a duty of a child teacher right now or a duty of a parent as i said that all are the stakeholders to educate our children that maybe the technology is playing a vital role in every sphere of life and education i was uh, just reading the quote that the technology is important for romancing also for educating children also so but the children need to be you know they have to it's a gift of a life you can say a gift of a god but they really have to understand that what exactly they have to to take we cannot ignore the role of a teacher or a role of a parent because you know uh, as uh, you said uh, mr jaswinder that it's you know it's very important thing it's a stick in the hand of somebody you are a blind but uh, the technology works as a stick it can show you the path but the right path should go to the to a child right information should be there for a child uh, it has of course it has infused the classroom you know with the we can't ignore uh, that we will not have the digital learning tools uh, of course 
um, as uh, you were talking i also experimented uh, this thing that if your teacher is not very good but if she has some kind of content uh, on uh, some kind of a platform it always help the teacher to give the better information better way of uh, teaching will be there in in our life um, i was also talking about that you know uh, we have to deepen the understanding of a child like uh, usually sometime you know uh, on whatsapp and all we are getting you know uh, the information as uh, amrita was saying that i also you know mujhe samajh mein nahi aata sometime what they are writing asap so i thought what is this asap <laughs> then i got to understand that as soon as possible you do it tbh what is this tbh you really have to hunt so you know it is even sometime spoiling the language of a child also this computer internet technology has remarkably uh, 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 bring a revolution um, in the field of education and all their uh, software which you people are bringing to us which is enabling us which is giving a different kind of shows through a uh, different kind uh, you know the uh, quizzes there uh, some kind of the small stories are there which is teaching so many things to our children uh but of course the teacher need to be trained so that she can educate uh you know we have to have a blending of everything hum teacher ko bhi nahi hata sakte we cannot you know that technology also so let's hand have hand in hand and do some miracle in the <laughs> life of our children thank you ma'am thank you because we also know that uh... the most important or hard work we have to do is on the teachers not even on the parents or students the most of the time we have to do hard work on the teachers so that because the teachers are the people who are directly connected to the students so need they need to be motivated and of course they had to be trained that is for sure thank you so much ma'am uh, coming up to jachinder sir we'll uh, wind up with your views that what sort of uh, the things you have taken as and we have been talking with ma'am uh bhavna ma'am about nep 2020 expression learning pedagogy so what system we are putting up in your uh, particular this uh, lab okay what things have you brought up so if i sum it up of you know when we're talking about technology and language the first thing is that rightly said by i think amrita ma'am is that blended education okay blend is there to stay blend is there to stay now there are two kinds of blends one is the teacher component and the other is technology component that's one blend that is there to say we are already using it the other blend is teaching within the school premises and learning happening at home both these blends are very very important okay rightly said i want to practice at an x time i am not comfortable at a y time let the child decide because ultimately he will learn when he wants and the way he wants as a teacher i can teach at a time where everybody say i can't teach different people have different time but the learning can happen whenever they want so that's the blend which is important and what we have done is in our entire all the languages that we are working we have brought in blended and we've been talking about this since last 15 years you know massachusetts mit has always said that only e learning is not going to work only classroom learning is not going to work the blend is going to work and that is what has i mean i've seen results i've done it uh, i mean in fact delhi government uh, neeta bali ma'am and bhavna ma'am and dheerat sir uh, since you come to delhi quite a lot uh, amita ma'am we did a huge project with the delhi government for training the hindi medium students of the government schools and then they said you train them and let it be assessed by trinity college london third party we could see that you know the teachers are good but when we gave them technology we blended with that and we allowed the students to practice at home using their mobile phones the results were good excellent why the child had the flexibility we all talked about flexibility flexibility in learning is important because i want to learn the way i want it it's for me what we need to do is inculcate those good things good habits the right kind of sense that what is good and what is not good so that is one part the other part you know during the pandemic what helped a lot of our customer school is that we we had said that now this product is there whether you use into the school or you use it at home it can work now say look at it the pandemic is not there and everything is good 
But what if a teacher has an emergency at home? She's got a sick child. She can't come. She can might as well deliver the session from home because the kids have already done that. So we don't have to say, okay, ma'am, you're absent. You lose that month, day's month, uh, salary. And we tell the students that I'm giving you a proxy, go to the ground, and they lose that day's uh, learning. Need not. So technology works this way, but very important. Anything that you implement has to be cloud-based. It should be anytime, anywhere, anyhow. That means any device. So, I mean, that's what the world is saying. Don't say this will work only on a computer. Don't say this will work only on a uh, mobile phone. It should work on anything. So there's a technology, uh, Dida, sir, you will second me on that, is on Web2 technologies. If you use Web2 technologies, that is uh, the World Wide Web 2, that me is saying that anything that you make should work anywhere with the least amount of bandwidth. In a country like ours, there are haves and have nots. They should reach the have not small because the Bharat needs this more than the India. Right? Like we said, when you go to the tier two, tier three cities, those kids, you give them a phone for 20 minutes, they will go search for a thousand things because they know they're going to get it only for 20 minutes. And some kids, they will not bother. So let's, I mean, that's how. And technology, uh, technology can bridge the divide which is there, the haves and the have not for education at least. Rest of the things go away. So, and because internet in India is the cheapest in the world, we are lucky to be in a country where internet is the cheapest in the world. And very soon, with the a lot of factories, you know, making in your state, uh, Uttar Pradesh, the mobiles and things will be there. So, I all if I have to sum it up, technology, the right amount of use, teachers, the right amount of you know their delivery, and teachers becoming a little more smarter technology-wise. They need not to do coding. Okay, but they need to know the tools and tools if you use twice, third day you can use it on your own. So I will sum it up with that. So what we've done is we've actually put up technology into language learning. And that's how we've been able to, you know, even those two years of uh, pandemic, we still survived with more than 65 people working. It's because technology was able to do that. So that's how it is. Sir. That's great, sir. You are absolutely right. Even I feel that even the schools are open, the teachers, they use the smart classes and the technology just for the purpose that they have to teach the uh, students through technology only that will be more important and if the things are going to the students smartly through the smart teachers that will be more and more effective that is that is for sure thank you so much Aswinda, sir uh, for giving us so much guidance thank you dearest sir thank you amrita ma'am thank you nita ma'am thank you bhavna ma'am for coming and uh, giving you valuable time we have exceeded the time but the topic is so good that it will take two more hours more, more hours then only we won't be able to complete that Thank you so much. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank so, you. I hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.